Unsightly Opinions, my name's Tamara. Today I am really excited because this is the inaugural episode of Blind Girl DIY. Back at the beginning of the year, I challenged myself to try something new every single month. So for May, I am going to be refinishing free Kijiji furniture. I think we spent $5 on the- Woo! As you all know by now, I am moving very shortly, so instead of buying new furniture, I'm going to try and upcycle or refurbish some old pieces that we picked up for free, or less than $10 on Kijiji, and see if we can turn it into something really nice. We've got a couple of coffee tables, a couple of end tables, and we're gonna do some paint pouring. I'm gonna use a power sander for the very first time. It's gonna be tons of fun, so stay tuned. Step one, sanding and patching. Okay, let's see how this goes. Oh, I unplugged it. Okay, let's try that again. I'm gonna try and put it down flat. Let's turn that volume down so you don't have to listen to the power sander as I hyperspeed through some of the sanding footage. I was pleasantly surprised at how easy it was to use a power sander once I got into it. I could generally feel where the edges of the furniture was, and so long as I stabilized with both hands, there was no way I was going to hurt myself. I am not a power tool user, and I found this really straightforward. How'd I do? Looks okay to me. I found the power sander to be really useful for doing large flat surfaces, at least that's what I found the most luck at. So I did that on the tops of my end tables, my coffee table, and anything else that I was going to need to paint or prime later to make sure that I had a good roughed up surface that the primer was going to stick to. Once the flat surfaces were done, I had to go in by hand with a piece of sandpaper and do all the fiddly bits. Vlog style update time. We have been sanding for hours. I am exhausted. I thought we were gonna get this all done in one day, but we'll see. Oh, you young, inexperienced Padawan. Rule number one, construction never goes to schedule. We're now clean and wiped, and we're ready for the next step. Robbie was nice enough to help me take this down to the bare wood, but there are still a couple of little nicks and dings that we're gonna need to fill. So I have wood filler here, and I'm gonna feel for the holes and just put some wood filler in. I've never used this product before, we're gonna just give it a go and see what happens. It does suggest wearing a mask, so that we are going to do. And I'm gonna find the first hole here. There's one. I don't know if there's a proper technique to this, but I'm just kind of pushing it into the which does not seem to be working. Step number two, priming and painting. Sorry, we thought we were rolling. We're now on to painting, so I am just priming. And for those of you who no doubt will have questions at home about how this blind girl paints, I have a pretty decent sense of what's on my brush just by feel. That way I can tell kind of when my brush is getting dry. It isn't an exact science, so I always have somebody come over really quickly after I've done a surface and check for lumps and bumps or missed areas because there's always a possibility I missed it, even though I'm generally pretty good at kind of making sure that everything's covered, I will miss something because I can't see what it is. Now let's just hyperspeed our way through the painting and priming of these coffee tables and end tables so we can get on to the fun stuff, the paint pour. Step number three paint pouring. What was a quick transition for you was more than a week of painting for us. We painted these little tables white. These are going to go outside and we thought it might be really cool to do a sealed acrylic paint pour. So we prepped these. We skipped the painting part because everybody knows how to paint. I'm not very good at it. Robbie was continually fixing it and there was a lot of swearing involved. It was a rough week but we are painted, prepped, and we are just about to lose the light. So if the lighting is changing on you, that's what's going on. I'm gonna do one table, Robbie's gonna do one table. We have a coffee table that we're gonna try blow marbling, and we have a coffee table for outside that who knows what we're gonna do with. Uh, I think we should use, probably save some of the blues and stuff for that coffee table too. Sure. So we're gonna each prep a cup, and then we're gonna get to pouring. Hope you enjoy. Paint pouring is a ton of fun. 
We've done it on this channel before, so if you've missed that video, I'm going to link it in a card above where I explain it in much greater detail as to what I'm going to do right now. Paint pouring, you generally want to cover your surface in white acrylic paint to help it flow or pour over the entire surface. And then in a separate cup, you're going to essentially do a dirty pour or layer various colors of acrylic paint in as many layers as possible into a cup, dump it upside down on your surface, and then tip it around to make sure your entire surface gets coverage. In this case, we were using a variety of blues, whites, iridescents, and purples to create something really vibrant that I could put on my patio and be really bright and colorful because I wanted to bring some color and some life into my backyard. Every piece of acrylic art will turn out entirely unique, so don't expect to get something that's going to look really consistent across multiple pieces. That's not what I was going for in this look, so I wasn't too concerned when my second piece turned out very different from my first piece. I just thought it added to the uniqueness of the acrylic pour and just creating something that was really bright, colorful, and unique. And with our experiments on our little tables out of the way, it was onto our coffee tables. We are going to cover this table in white paint. We have primed a really ugly marble tabletop. And uh, here we go. I got my hands in it. I got some color in it already. Oh, it doesn't matter. Really These colors are going matter. in anyway. Word to the wise, never do this on a marble tabletop that you've painted. Oh my gosh, this table weighed probably a hundred pounds. Robbie and I had such a hard time lifting it and tipping it, and it turned out hideous. We ended up redoing it three separate times. Here we go, ladies Last and gentlemen. Last one, please. Please work. This is such a large surface area, and I hope this is going in our living room. Mm -hmm. Oh. Because this table was three feet by three feet or a meter by a meter wide, it took almost two full cups of watered down acrylic paint to create our base before we could even start our dirty pour. For this pour, we used mostly natural colors or stone colors, so in this case, some iridescence, some creams, grays, a little bit of black, and more white. It turned out really, really pretty and looks very much like marble. So if you're trying to go for something that's a little more realistic or you want to create something that looks a little bit more like stone, make sure you use neutral colors or natural colors because it's going to turn out a lot better. When we got the table mostly finished and poured, Robbie decided that it didn't quite have enough color in the corners, so we added some grays and whites and more paint to the corners. We tipped it again and it ended up turning out really nice. Step number four, sealing. It's been well over a month since I've recorded anything on this project and it feels like it's been an exercise in futility. Everything that could have gone wrong has gone wrong. I was just trying to get the bullet points and the fun parts and cut to the end where everybody wants to see the grand reveal, but oh boy, I think this table next to me, the big coffee table, is the only thing that has not been repaint poured at least once. The little coffee table that we're gonna touch up today has been paint poured three times because of unfortunate circumstances. I don't think I'm very good at this DIY stuff. Anyways, the problem with this coffee table is when we tried to seal it with acrylic, it didn't seal flat. So we had to sand a bunch of stuff down, not to mention the number of dog hairs. Who's responsible for that? that ended up becoming trapped in the acrylic. There were also dead bugs because we tried doing it outside. It, it, was, it was a whole thing. So we are finally at the end stage. We're gonna seal it with some acrylic pour, hopefully for the last time because I can't afford any more acrylic pour. And then we will do a grand reveal and you can see the finished product. Because this is so big, Robbie is going to be helping me with smoothing it and making sure that it goes on flat because I messed it up royally last time. I'm, I'm admitting it, I need help. It turns out that we needed to do it again even after this take because this one didn't seal flat either. Word to the wise, do not follow the instructions on the acrylic sealer. It doesn't work. It suggested letting it dry at a 45 degree angle and it created horrible runs in the sealer. It was awful. So what you're going to want to do is not what you're seeing on screen right now. 
start at one end and put a lot of sealer on that one end and let it pour towards the other side. When it stops pouring, go just above where it stopped pouring and pour another line so it continues the pour all the way off the edge. That is the only way you're gonna get it smooth. Do not use spatulas or rollers or anything else. It will just end in tears. If you're wondering why it's so messy in every background, we're moving in less than a week. We started this project at the beginning of May. It is now almost the end of June and we're moving in like five days. So we gotta get this done. I'm gonna be starting with this mini end table here and just putting one coat of acrylic pour. I don't want a super smooth finish, so I'm gonna just use a foam roller to get that on. And you gotta move quick because it really, really likes to set. So I'm just gonna get it on there and just, it'll self-level-ish, hopefully. If you don't care about that high gloss finish, the foam roller does a great job of creating a very lightly spackled finish. And now for the grand reveal. First, let's start with the outdoor furniture. I think that even though we use the same colors, each piece has a very different feel. And because they're not so matchy-matchy, it adds a lot of personality to the outdoor patio space. The first end table has a lot more whites and indigos and blues to it, so it feels very much like a turbulent ocean that's at war with itself. And it contrasts beautifully with the second end table, which has a much more tropical feel because it had more teals and blues come forward. The coffee table has more of an oil slick feel to it with blues, purples, and even some golds coming through in the iridescent shine. This is definitely my least favorite piece of the three, probably because it took three separate attempts to get a paint pour that would go all the way over the edge. It could have used more tipping and more pouring, but I had had enough. It was so stinking heavy and so slippery when you got it wet. I do not recommend trying to do this with any kind of a marble tabletop. Last but certainly not least is my favorite piece, the marbled coffee table. From most angles, it looks exactly like white marble with gray streaks running through it, but when the sun hits it just right, there's this shock of iridescent purple which goes beautifully in my living room. Doing projects like this is always an adventure, and having done it once, I have a much better appreciation for why custom furniture is so expensive. Even though it failed multiple times, I think it's more about the learning experience and the journey than the end result, although I do think it turned out pretty well. I'd love to know your thoughts, and I hope you enjoyed this video. It took a long time to edit and get right, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.